This is Dr. Nikki. I'm really excited to be here with you again talking about the critical areas. Today we're going to talk about second grade. Second grade, there's not really that many critical areas. I mean, second grade really begins to solidify the understandings that have been um, talked about in kindergarten and first grade. So by second grade, kids are expected to really understand addition and subtraction and know their basic facts. In fact, in the Common Core, the footnote says C10A6. And 10A6 is what I told the first grade teachers they need to get a necklace made of, 10A6, because that's the standard that talks about kids having fluency. And um, second graders are also supposed to be fluent through 100, right, for basic, or for, you know, for uh, telling word problems. And they're supposed to do calculations through 1,000. So, and that comes up in the base 10 standard. So that's a critical area, the base 10 standard um, that kids should be able, you know, to add through 100 and through 1,000 and um, using different strategies. And then measurement comes up. Measurement is a critical area because kids are expected to learn customary and metric system. That's something because metric system used to not come up for until some of the older grades, but now it's bam, right here in second grade. You're going to have metric system and customary system. And so I'm going to give you some strategies for teaching that. And then finally, geometry. Geometry always comes at us because geometry is a critical area in every grade level. So during this video, you're going to see lots of great ideas on how to teach those critical areas. Um, the critical areas for second grade start out really with place value. The operations in algebraic thinking domain is really supposed to become very secure in um, first grade, in kindergarten and first grade in terms of addition and subtraction and so forth. So the standards say just refer to first grade and really make sure kids know those basic facts. But then you get to the base 10 domain and children are really going to do a lot in that domain. That is a critical area for second grade. Skip counting. First of all, so when you're doing skip counting with kids on my blog, I have a whole bunch of skip counting stuff. And so you can go and look at that. But you want kids to actually see that there's a quantity associated with the skip count. So two, four, six, eight, ten. You should do things like that where they actually get to see the quantity on sparkle box under skip counting. They have some really good visuals where they show like boots counting in twos, fingers counting in fives and so forth. So you want to do some stuff where kids associate the quantity. Um, with the count and then you do you know some of the more abstract things where you take you know number lines or you take uh, number grids and you have kids do the skip counts two four six eight and so forth but what you have to realize is this is really abstract remember you always want to teach concrete pictorial abstract so concrete would be doing it with the kids Pictorial would be having kids um, to like draw their hands and stuff and then abstract on the number grid. So the first critical area is base 10 and skip counting by fives, by tens, and by hundreds is something that children are supposed to be able to do. The next thing that kids are supposed to be able to really understand in second grade is this idea of tens and ones. I'm going to put out the base 10 blocks because I do a lot of work with the base 10 blocks. I have kids stamp out the number, they roll a number, and they use again the double um, the double die. So if they roll the double die, I'd say outside number's 10, inside number's 1's, and so this number happens to be 66, and then they'd have to stamp it out, okay? Um, also, I have kids roll the die, and then say, you know, they get the number 85, they have to write the number, they have to show it in base 10 form, they have to write it out in expanded form, and they have to write the number word. So that's just a center where they would practice doing that. 10's, 100's, and 1's, really important. They also have to be able to compare numbers. So I have the kids roll the die, right? They can do it by themselves or with a partner. Inside number, outside number. So inside number is ones, outside number is tens. So they, and then they roll again. And this was 63. And then they have to compare. 
21 is less than 63. And I have the kids write out is less than because I want them to use the math language. Remember, language is super important. Precision, it's part of the precision standard, or practice rather, um, and that kids that you can use math words, right? Not just say 21 is smaller than 63. They should be able to say that 21 is less than 63. All right, so that's important. That is a critical area, next critical area that kids will have fluency adding and subtracting within a thousand based on strategies um, based in place value, right? And so let's take this one, 354 plus 526, and to solve it using the base 10 pictures. And so they draw out 354 and they draw out 526 and then they group those ones together and they make that into a 10 and now we're left with 800 plus 80 okay that's one strategy that they absolutely have to know it's a name strategy in the mathematical progressions here's another strategy that kids should know partial sum so 459 plus 372 um, what you're going to have the kids do is break it apart 400 plus 50 plus 9 i like using the different colors so then you have 700 plus 120 plus 11 you get 820 plus 11 equals 831 and then you always want kids to solve in one way and check in another so then they would come over here and they would check with paper and pencil and make sure that what they got here matches what they got there, that those are the same numbers. So you see they did it partial sums and then they did it paper, oh, I call this paper and pencil. In the common core they call it general method. Okay. All right, here's another way that kids should know how to add. Here's using the open number line. You have 695 plus 277. You start at 695, and the 277 is going to be your jumper number. Me and the kids call it jumper number. And then they jump 100 and 100 plus 5 to get us to 900 plus 72. We get 972. When we check it with the paper and pencil method, we get 972 up here. 972, 972. All right, so they both match. Remember, Common Core says solve one way, check another. Open number line is a named strategy in the Common Core. You should definitely be using that with your kids. Okay, so the point here is that kids should know how to add within 1,000 using a variety of strategies. All right, now, the next area is um, measurement. Children are introduced to both customary and metric system in second grade. And so remember that those base 10 units are centimeters and the unifix cubes are inches. And so you want kids, you know, using rulers but other tools. So like you could say measure this marker in centimeters right and then they could use a ruler to do that and measure this marker in inches and then they can use the unifix cubes as well as a ruler to do that measurement is a critical area in second grade and finally in second grade another critical area of course is geometry remember geometry geometry is a critical area in every grade level so kids are expected to compose and decompose shapes you're going to have to pull out those pattern blocks so that kids can compose and decompose shapes so they should composing and decomposing means that they can look at it you know and say how you make it and and um, if you take it apart what it consists of so one hexagon can be a trapezoid and three triangles it can be a lot of other things as well but kids should know how to do that and they should be able to describe and analyze sides and angles that becomes really important in second grade to be able to describe shapes in terms of sides and angles and to also be able to build shapes and draw them so you can see here I built and then I drew it and I demarcated the the sides and the angles and the vertices so you want kids to be able to do that. Um, they should describe and analyze shapes. They should investigate, describe, reason, 
about composing and decomposing. So I'm just, you know, bringing back the Play-Doh. People try to get rid of Play-Doh, but it should definitely be in the classrooms. And so kids are building with Play-Doh, you know, build a cylinder, build a cube. That's much different than just saying draw it. So you want kids drawing it and building it. You want to get those dot paints from the um, 99 cent store, or, you know, you can get them from like Lakeshore or Teacher Store and have kids painting them. I like the dot paints because they're not as messy, um, but, I would have them certainly drawing them, I would have them painting them, and I would have them building them with Play-Doh. All right, 